Action. show your monthly dose of ai chaos because while you were wrapping up presents microsoft was wrapping up a 17.5 billion dollar deal in india robots were nailing choreography better than most backup dancers and ram sticks somehow became a luxury item more than you can afford pal December in AI was absolutely unhinged. Open source models were running on laptops from 2019 that beat models 10x their size. Wow. And Meta teaching AI to isolate any sound from audio, including that one barking dog ruining your entire podcast. So buckle up, these are the top eight drops from December that actually mattered. Let's get into it. Number one, Microsoft's $17.5 billion India investment. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella met with India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi in early December and announced a $17.5 billion investment over four years. That's Microsoft's largest ever investment in Asia. To put this in perspective, in January 2025, Microsoft committed $3 billion to India. Ten months later, they looked at that number and said, Actually, let's just multiply that by six. The money is going towards AI infrastructure, data centers, and what Microsoft calls sovereign capabilities, which is basically corporate speak for, we're building stuff that stays in India. The Hyderabad data center goes live mid-2026, and Microsoft says it'll be their largest hyperscale region in India. For scale, they described it as roughly equivalent in size to two Eden Garden stadiums combined. That's not a tech spec, that's actually a flex. And Microsoft is not alone. Google dropped $15 billion on an AI hub in Vishakhapatnam. OpenAI is opening an India office. Claude is opening an India office. This is not a trend. This is land grab. India has 900 million internet users, a booming digital economy, and costs a fraction of what it takes to build in Silicon Valley. The message is pretty clear. India isn't a market anymore. It is the market. Next up, robots dancing at a concert. Six unitary G1 humanoid robots performed as backup dancers at a Wang Li Hom concert in Chengdu, China. And I'm not talking about awkward sidestepping. These things did synchronized Webster flips in front of 18,000 people while wearing silver sequined outfits, like they're auditioning for a cyberpunk boy band. Elon Musk saw the video and tweeted one word, impressive. Which, coming from the guy who makes flamethrowers for fun, is basically a Michelin star for robots. The Unity G1 stands 1.27 meters tall, weighs 35 kilograms, and has 43 joints. For reference, that's more joints than most people use in an entire year. The robots move with millisecond level audio synchronization, which means they're better at staying on beat than half the people at your cousin's wedding. The concert was the demo reel. The actual deployment is only coming. And it turns out if a robot can nail choreography in sequence, navigating a burning building is probably easier. Next up, Ramageddon. If you tried to buy RAM in December, you know exactly what I'm going to talk about. A 32 GB DDR5 kit that cost $130 in November now costs $330. That's a 156% increase in three weeks. For context, gold had its best year since 1979 with about 70% gains. Your computer memory is now outperforming precious metals. Some kits jumped even 500%. Micron killed the crucial brand entirely to focus on AI data centers, which is basically like your local coffee shop shutting down because they got a catering contract with NASA. Why? Because AI ate all the memory, literally. Samsung, SK Hynix, and Micron shifted production towards high bandwidth memory, the fancy stuff AI GPUs need. Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and Meta placed open-ended orders saying, give us everything you've got. We don't really care what it costs. DDR5 RAM that cost $50 in January now cost $150. Tokyo's Akihabara district started rationing RAM purchases like it's wartime Britain. CyberPower PC warned that a basic 16 GB system would cost $80 more. One Reddit user said his RAM manufacturer actually called him, asking if they had any RAM to sell back to them. That's like Coca-Cola asking a store if they've got any spare Coke lying around. When will it end? Analysts say 2027 or 2028. Until then, your laptop upgrades can probably wait. All right, before we continue, quick game. I'm going to show you an image for five seconds. You tell me, is it AI or is it real? Are you ready? Let's go. 
if you guessed AI, you are wrong. This is actually a real image. Okay, let's try again. If you thought this was real, you're absolutely wrong. This is AI generated. Let's do it again. If you said this was AI, you're right. Next up, OpenAI GPT Image 1.5. OpenAI dropped GPT Image 1.5 in mid-December, trying to catch up to the party everyone else already showed up to. Google's Nano Banana Pro launched in November with legible text rendering. Flux 2 came out around the same time and runs circles around most models. China's Z Image Turbo generates images on 2019 hardware. So when OpenAI announced GPT 1.5 with finally readable text, the response was basically, yeah, we've kind of had that for a while now. See, don't get me wrong, GPT Image 1.5 is pretty solid. It's 4x faster than GPT Image 1, preserves faces and logos across edits, and costs 20% less on the APIs. For brands that need consistent product catalogs or marketing assets, it kind of works. But OpenAI, quite frankly, is late. Nano Banana Pro dominates on bilingual text. Z Image Turbo runs on consumer hardware and delivers comparable quality. Flux 2 is fully open source and doesn't cost you anything per generation. OpenAI is betting on speed and precision. Google's betting on multilingual power. China is betting on accessibility. The image generation race right now is not about who's best anymore. It's about who's best for what. And speaking about China's Z image model, that's what we have next. Alibaba dropped Z image turbo in late November, and it's basically their middle finger to every Western AI lab burning billions on compute. Z image is a 6 billion parameter model that runs on GPU from 2019, and it generates photorealistic images in 34 seconds. Flux 2, by comparison, needs 24 GB of VRAM and takes 10 times longer. Z image runs on 6 GB. That's basically the difference between I need a server rack and I have a laptop from college. It ranked number one among open source models. And within weeks, the community cracked over 200 custom resources. Here's the strategy though. While OpenAI and Google are literally throwing money at massive models that need data centers, China is building models that run on hardware that you already own. And when your model is 10x faster with one fourth the VRAM, you don't need venture capital. You just need GitHub. Western labs are selling subscriptions. China is giving away the code. Guess which one wants adoption? Chinese company Kuaishu updated Kling to version 2.6 in early December. And it's basically steal anyone's dance moves, the software. Motion control works like this. You upload a video of someone doing, let's say, a backflip. Kling watches it, learns the motion, and then you can make a completely different character. Maybe you do that exact same backflip. It's motion capture without the awkward sensor suit. Just grand theft choreography, for the lack of a better way to put it. The use cases are pretty obvious. Wedding videographers need to add some flair, steal a professional dancer's moves. Kling O1 does this while also being a unified video model that generates and edits all in one go. If you type change the weather to snowy, it adjusts the sky lighting reflections without turning your subject into a Picasso painting halfway through. It also does the voice cloning. Upload your voice once and every character in the video can sound like you, which is either incredibly useful or the beginning of a Black Mirror episode, depending on your perspective. When it comes to speed, it's 20 times faster in draft mode. When it comes to quality, it generates native 2K and renders to 4K and HDR as well. The vibe, Chinese engineers said, while you keep talking about AI safety, we are building the whole tool set. All right, round two. I'm gonna show you two more images, five seconds, AI or real. Let's go. If you thought this was real, you're absolutely wrong. This is AI generated. Let's try again. If you said this was AI, well, you're right. Next up, Meta Sam Audio. Meta launched Sam Audio in mid-December, and it's basically delete that embarrassing sound, the app. You give it a messy audio file, like let's say a podcast with construction near your house. <laughs> if you live in Bangalore, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Or a Zoom call where your cat decided 3 p.m. was the perfect time for an existential crisis. And Sam Audio isolates or removes specific sounds like these. If you type barking dog, it vanishes. Click on the drummer in a video and Sam Audio extracts just the drums. If you mark a time range, everything in that segment gets separated out into stems. It's like Photoshop's magic wand tool, but for sounds, and it actually works. Meta is calling their span prompt feature an industry first, which is 
technically true, but also like saying, we invented the highlighting part of the recording you don't want. Groundbreaking, debatable. Useful, extremely. The model runs faster than real time and it's open source, which basically means everyone from podcasters to people with very specific hobbies actually have access to professional grade audio isolation. Privacy advocates are, however, freaking out though, because you can isolate individual voices from crowd recordings. Meta's response, if it's illegal without AI, don't use AI to do it. And finally, we have Mistral's DevStral 2. Mistral dropped DevStral 2 in early December, and it's there we don't need a trillion parameters to beat you model. DevStral 2 has 123 billion parameters. DeepSeek v3.2, 671 billion. That's five times bigger. And in head-to-head evaluations, -head DevStral 2 still won 42.8% of the time, which is basically the AI equivalent of a lightweight boxer knocking out a heavyweight. The strategy, efficiency over ego. DevStral 2 runs on a single high-end GPU. DeepSeek needs a server farm. One costs you electricity, the other costs you data center lease. Well, there's also DevStral Small 2 with 24 billion parameters that runs on a MacBook. Both of them have 256,000 context window, meaning they can process entire code bases without forgetting what they read. And in other news, Mistral also launched Vibe CLI, a command line assistant that understands your whole project and can orchestrate changes across multiple files. Trust issues with AI touching your production code are sold separately though. And that's December. Here's the thing nobody is saying out loud though. While Silicon Valley was debating which model needs more parameters, China just shipped. Image models on college laptops, motion capture without the suit, they pretty much looked at we need more compute argument and said we could just write better code. The gap between AI research and AI products that people actually use is shrinking so fast that by the time a company finishes their product roadmap presentation, somebody in China already built it, open sourced it and added 200 community resources on GitHub. We're at a point where a 6 billion parameter model runs on your old gaming GPU and beats systems that cost venture capitalists their entire Series B rounds. Which means the excuse of we don't have the resources just became we didn't think of it fast enough. December was chaos and January is going to be worse. And honestly, I'm here for it. My name is Sridev and this was The Late Night Show. Good night.